still see your shadows in my room. Can't take back. Hey guys, so today I went to Midsummer Scream in Long Beach, California. And it's basically a Comic Con, but for all things horror. And if you say to the end of the video, you'll be able to see uh, an HHN update, a Halloween Horror Nights update for Hollywood and California. Alright, here's part of the line for Midsummer Scream. Me to make that permanent. <laughs> I'll go grab my suit. Universal Orlando Resort to our stage for the first time anywhere. Please welcome together for the first time anywhere, creative director and executive producer for Universal Studios Hollywood, John Murdy. Art Director and Production Designer for Universal Studios Hollywood, Chris Williams. And Senior Director of Entertainment Creative Development for Universal Orlando Resort, Michael Ayalo.
So, you know, we talked about this a little bit, but do you each try to do a shared IP relatively the same, or do you like them to do your own twist on them from SoCal Exploring? Um, and I think you answered it earlier, Mike. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I don't think we necessarily, like, in our minds set out to do that. I think it naturally ends up that way. Uh, usually when, when, when we decide an IP, we go off and we design, Chris and I get together and we come up with our idea and you guys get together and you come up with your idea and then inevitably we have that moment, before, usually right before we're going to pitch it, to, to say like, oh, how does your maze go? Here's how our maze goes. Um, but ours, ours is actually different right out of the gate on this one. Right out of the gate it's different, yeah. Um, here's an example. So for, for Hollywood, um, the facade for the maze is going to be Emma and Henry's house, right? And really, when Chris and I sat down to design it, it's because it's the first scene in the movie, right? Um, and we really liked the idea of the ghosts out front. Uh, we liked the idea, oh, there's the house, by the way. Uh, it's in construction right now. It's being built. Uh, this is prior to pop props and dressing. Obviously, we have to do all the, the ghost figures. Uh, but we like the idea of kind of teasing Sam. So the first time you see him, he is like the sheet ghost. You know, it's just like how Emma tragically encountered him in the movie. Um, and of course, you're gonna run into Emma as well when you're going through this section. But for Orlando... For Orlando, because we had done the zone already, we really wanted to kind of hit the guests over the head with something large in scale right off the bat. So we're beginning our maze with Creek's house. And we, this is in our parade facility, parade building facility. So we're building Creek's house and this is two... And the girl's mid-transformation. So this is the prosthetic sculpt for the mid-transformation werewolf girl. Um, of course, we have to do the Halloween school bus massacre scene because it's bitching. Um, and when we were working on this, and, it's, it, and you guys thought the same exact way, uh, when Chris and I were talking about how do we want to do this scene, um, this is a, an image. I think when I was writing the first outline, I sent this yeah. image to you and said, that should yes. be that. That should be what we exactly. see. Exactly. Yep. And that's what you'll see. So you're going to see the partially submerged school bus in water um, with all the cat cat tails, is that right? Cat yes. tails around yep. it. Yep. Um, and, and you encounter all of the school bus massacre kids. Uh, if you don't know the film, this is the school bus massacre kids. Uh, these parents put all their troubled children on the bus and they, they pay the bus driver off to drive them into a quarry and kill all their kids. But of course, as in all horror movies, it doesn't quite go like that and, and they come back. When they come back, they look like this. They've been rotting down there in that water for decades. So they look all, you know, kind of partially disintegrated and mildewy and slimy. And, and uh, that's the look that Chris and I latched onto for the maze. Um, and just to give you a close up, that's kind of what it looks like in the film. And then this is your illustration. This is a color elevation of, of the quarry, and it's, it's a massive scene near the tail end of the maze. Uh, and the bus is practical, so it's, even though it's drawn in this picture, it is going to be a practical element within the scene. So again, filled with fog and, and the unfortunate uh, ghostly souls of, of those, those poor kids. And speaking of those poor kids, let's take a look at them. I'll, I'll take you through, um, we're going to do all of them, every one of them, in the maze. Um, and the scares them, um, which you don't know about. Um, <laughs> So this is the, I'm going to quiz you guys on your knowledge of Trick or Treat. Does he have an official name? The Dracula Kid? God, Dra Dracula Kid? I don't know. I'm asking. I really don't know. I, I don't know. Okay, Dracula Kid. We're going to do Dracula Kid. Um, we're going to do the Bunny Kid. That's the sculpt we're working on right now for that. Skeleton Kid? I'm just going to make up names as we go along. You know, you, these are all done by McGee. Yeah, as well. and, done. and if you look at that texture on there, you know, they really tried to get that uh, paper mache that, look. Yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah, absolutely. Yep. This is big head, yeah. smiley face kid. <laughs> you know, right now there's, a, there's someone live streaming or in the audience oh, going, yeah. I know their what names. He doesn't I know their names. Right I'm sure. I'm sure that's happening at this very moment. Um, the devil face kid, uh, the clown. Big bag overhead, smiley face guy. <laughs> and upside down princess. Yeah. And so these are master uh, jack o' lantern that looks like it's on fire, just like in the film. Uh, that's Orlando's. Yeah, here's yeah. Orlando. So there's the uh, there's the interior of the stairwell from in Creek's house, mm -hmm. and uh, and then his bedroom, and yeah, there's the pumpkin, and that'll be a uh, a really fun kind of distractionary technique with a faux fire element that will occur that will draw everybody's eyes that way, so that you can't see where uh, where Sam's coming from. from yeah. Yeah. 
And, uh, and of course, you know, one of the cool things about Trick or Treat is everywhere you go in the film, you know, Sam is kind of there and he's, and he's watching you. So uh, I think both of us picked up on this, where as you're going through, you're going to see, in addition to the live performers who are playing Sam that are scaring you, you're also going to see all of these little tableaus, just like out of the film, this one literally, exactly like you see um, from the surprise party. So you'll see Sam throughout the entire experience as well. All right, here's another maze. Is the Stranger Things maze. How many of you guys are Stranger Things fans out there? Right on. Isn't this crazy? <laughs> uh, is the Stranger Things maze going to be focused on the first season, second season, or altogether combo of both from Isaac Munoz? Um, it's going to be focused on the first season, actually. Um, you know, it's funny. Again, I have to give credit to you guys on Twitter. You guys are the ones who made me aware of Stranger Things right when it debuted. As soon as I'd look at Twitter and everybody was talking about Stranger Things, and I was like, oh, I gotta watch this. And when I sat down to, to really dive into it and really watch it, I, I just loved it. I mean, I grew, I grew up in the 80s, so of course, you know, it, it spoke to me all of the 80s references. But beyond that, the writing, the acting, uh, the production values, everything about the show were fantastic. So, you know, when we sat right out of the gate, I think it was, this idea, the upside down. How do you do the upside down, right? Um, for us, and particularly Chris and, and Marissa's team um, leading the charge here, we talked early on that we, we need to do the upside down and we need you to feel like you're in the upside down. How are we gonna do this? So we did a series of mock-ups um, that I, I was at in Hollywood and we, you know, we tested all sorts of different things, projection, etc. cetera. Uh, we ended up um, doing this crazy grid that um, you guys put together in, in order to get the, and it's really about trying to get that floating particle effect, the, the spores that are floating. They don't float, they don't obey the laws of gravity when they float. They're not going up, they're going down. Um, you know, we tried snow, we tried everything you can imagine. Um, and nothing quite looked right, but what worked was a combination of a couple of different things. Projection, um, but also physical, actual objects. Um, and I don't know if you wanna, I'll explain that, but why, which, why you drew this grid? Well, there, there's the grid. So each letter is a, essentially a fiber optic that's coming through the wall at a, at a certain length. And on the end of that fiber optic um, is a cotton bag. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's exactly what happened when uh, he walked in the room during the R&D, saw so much of the cotton bat and he did split, but yeah. And that's what it is. It's a tiny little piece of like, honestly, it's like a, from a snow blanket, you know? So it's, it's a little bit different than a cotton ball. Um, and it's to diffuse the light yeah. so you can't see the point of light. And also then to simulate kind of this spore kind of look and feel to it. And then with a fan, depending on how long they are sticking out from the wall, will get some movement. And then like had John had said, with a, a combination of a couple of things, which also a short throw projector that has... For the Demogorgon, that's the head. Um, the teeth are one of the crazy things about this. Um, you know, you look at, uh, I'll change it to the other slide, where you can just see, you know, there's the, the main teeth, and then there's those tiny little minuscule little teeth, and he's got to do all of them, you know, for multiple, you're going to see a lot of this guy. So there's so much that he has to do just to create one. And then this is yours? Yeah, we're actually, yours? we're going to feature the Demigorgon in several different looks. So this is kind of like the closed mouth version of the Demigorgon. This is again a sculpt by our amazing in-house artists, uh, putting their talent on, on, on the clay. Um, I think the next one is an open mouth version. Yeah, yep. there he is. Um, one thing we're doing with the teeth, teeth like this, at least in Orlando, uh, th these types of smaller details, um, when our performers are moving, they're usually the first thing that starts yep. to break down. Break, yeah. So we're actually going to 3D print all of the teeth into this mesh that we can actually replace an entire um, layer of the Demigorgon's you know, uh, head in one fell swoop very quickly, uh, because we know for a fact, you know, just based on the erratic movement that these performers are gonna do within this costume, wanna make sure that we can make it, make it look the same way every single night, even if it takes, you know, within the hour to be able to fix and replace. 
Oh, uh, one thing too, we're also doing um, a puppeted version of the Demi Gorgon. We're building busts so that they can actually open and close throughout the maze. So there's several key moments within the maze where you'll see that version of the Demi Gorgon. So that's just a little sneak peek at um, Stranger Things. Uh, I think we should give you guys something. Yeah. yeah. How about two front of line tickets to Halloween Horror Nights 2018 and an exclusive behind the scenes tour with one of the creators of Halloween Horror Nights if you can answer. You were right.